welcome back everybody so I'm just going to be finishing up this project that I started before and um, there was one person who guessed what it was that I'm making um, 16 years ago I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I had uh, first I had a, a lumpectomy, which was they removed the tumor. But uh, when I went back to the doctor the week after surgery and the pathology was back, they discovered that they didn't get the whole tumor. So I was given the option to have another lumpectomy, which would have made a huge crater in my breast because there already was a huge crater in my breast. Or I could have um, a radical mastectomy, which would take the breast and the lymph nodes. And I chose the radical um, because I am a nurse and I knew that that was probably the safest as far as recurring breast cancer, the safest option for me. So I had my surgery, and at the time that I had my surgery, that was right around the time when all the implants were very troublesome that they were using. Uh, they were leaking and people were getting sick. And so that was not an option given to me uh, after my surgery is to have implant surgery. And also my surgery 16 years ago was just prior to the idea that it wasn't a bad idea to take both breasts. So that also wasn't given to me as an option is to take both off both breasts. However, 16 years later, I wish that that would have been what had happened. I wished I would have had both breasts taken off and I'll explain that. So, this is what I'm making today um, is a breast prosthesis and I'm making this for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I'm making it to support a Canadian woman who has gone through the same process as I have and who was brilliant enough to design this prosthesis, but more so I'm doing it to give myself some comfort. I have several purchased prostheses um, and I find them to be the most uncomfortable things ever. And I had, when I, my first one that I got, I got right after I had my surgery and I bought a um, prosthesis bra, which is a bra with just a normal bra, but they've just added a little lace across the back of the pocket so that or the the um the cup so that it forms a little pocket and um to begin with the bra at that time the bras that at that time for for prostheses were only back fastening bras and in my lifetime i have never worn that type of bra i've always used a front fastening bra so that put me off and secondly I am uh, a larger woman, my breasts are la larger, and I've always worn support bras that have the bigger back with the crisscross, and um, these, there was, there was nothing available at that time in these type of bras. They were all like fancy little bras, you know, because you had, I guess, only one breast they they wanted to make you as pretty as possible with the bra and in the long run um, in my opinion the most uncomfortable as possible so I only wore my prostheses and the breast or the uh, prosthesis bra once in a blue moon I worked full-time but I went out and I bought myself um, uh, support bra and I sewed my own pocket across the cup and then I would put my prosthesis in there and that was better than wearing the regular breast cancer bras but I found in the course of a day um, if it was 
uh, a warm day. Those prostheses are made out of plastic or rubber. Or I don't know what the outside of them is, but if, if you're warm and you're sweaty, it just makes you warmer and more sweaty. So I started not wearing, I wore my bra, but I didn't put anything in the other cup. And you know, when you're working outside of your home, that is kind of not what you want to do. So one day I was on the internet and I came across this pattern for breast prostheses, knitted, knitted boobs, knitted breast. So I made one and it was a game changer. What a comfortable breast that was. So that's what I'm making. The one that I made before, I've worn it pretty much for 16 years. I've washed it, I've worn it, I've washed it, I've worn it. And I think I have actually now worn it out. That one I knit using the cotton that you use for uh, dishcloths. And it was such a great fitting breast. It looked great. You could not tell in the bra that that wasn't a natural breast. It looked that good. But it has lost its shape now. Um, and I can't, I can't squeeze it back into shape anymore like I have done in the past. So I decided it's time to knit another one. However, since the last time I've made one of those, I have gained considerable amount of weight, which is not a good thing, but it is what it is. And so I'm not confident that this prosthesis that I'm making is actually going to be big enough. I've made it a little larger than the last one. And I'm knitting it out of sock yarn, actually. Um, it's wool. It's a super wash, though, so then I'll be still be able to wash it. So the, the wool is a little bit finer than the cotton yarn that I used before, but I'm, I made it bigger, so I'll see. I can always make another one. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not really costing me anything to make this. So that is what I'm making, and I'm just casting off the second part. It's made in two parts. You may make each part the same, and then you sew them together and you stuff them. So I'm just casting this off. And when I get done doing that, I will come back. So I finished casting off the second piece and I've gone ahead and I've pinned the, the two pieces together just so that, you know, um, they actually stretch out to be the right size. I, I noticed that the second piece that I, the one that I just cast off, I cast it off quite a bit tighter. So I do have a little bit of a, a gap here, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. So I pinned them all together and now I'm going to start sewing them together. You sew them together with the wrong sides together. And then you uh, leave a hole, of course, because you're going to put stuffing in there. And um, so I'm going to start doing that now. I won't I won't make you watch me do this it's kind of a boring thing but um, I'll come back when I'm getting close to the end to be able to stuff it all right I'm just about finished going around this prosthesis here I've chosen um, the, the other one that I made I just um, stuffed it with the commercial fiber fill that you can buy, the bags, you know, at Walmart and stuff like that, and it was fine. But this one, I decided, seems as I've made this out of wool, I had some wool roving that I was, I had left over from a project, a doll making project that I did where um, the doll, it was an antique doll that I restored and I stuffed it with wool roving and um i thought i would maybe use this try this and see how how this worked this won't clump i don't think as bad as the fiber fill when you start washing it it sort of clumps around and, and it knots together and then you can't really do anything with it so perhaps this might be better for you know 
keeping the breast in shape if it's not something inside of it that's going to clump all together and make it lumpy. <clears throat> we'll see. Like I said, I can always make another one. It's not like it's costing me any money to make these. It's just a little bit of time. So this is the last stitch I'm going to do, or the last two here. And then I'm going to fill it with the wool roving. I've left a hole this big and I've kind of put the two pieces together so you can sort of see the breast. But before I do that, oh and I'll just show you the roving that I'm using. So I've I've fluffed this out. It's really really nice soft stuff and I think it'll it'll hold the shape really well. I could even fluff it out more if I want to. Before I do that though, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to read you a poem I wrote about my experience. And um, <clears throat> I wrote this poem in 2008. And uh, at the time that I wrote it, I was working for a physician and he read it and he was so taken with it. He, he unbeknownst to me, he took it to um, a breast cancer clinic and they had um, they were producing a, a periodical every every I think it was once a month for for breast cancer patients and survivors and they published it so I've always felt very happy that he did that for me so this is my I'm just going to take these glasses off because I can't read with them uh, this is perennial pink was a hot day. It was a hot July day when first we met. Through cir circumstances, I'll not forget. I the seeker, he the sought, to save my life, or so I thought. The office crowded with such as me, I ventured forth at five to three. Mind a flutter, I took a seat, controlling tears that weren't discreet. Nerves kicked in, my my breath drew short. I'd never been a panicked sort, but that was but this was wrought with pain and fear. This very thing that brought me here. A lengthy wait for one and all, then certain dread when name was called. Two steps, three steps, ten or more. Then have a seat. I'll close the door. First impressions seldom fade, especially when so gently made. Soft, warm eyes, a caring smile, advised that I'd be here a while. Biopsy passed, breast cancer cells. Percent involved, no one can tell. Surgery certain, more treatment too, as much as needed. Okay with you? Feeling sick, heads buzzing some, husband's crying, I'm feeling numb. Swallow the lump that quickly has gathered, focus on thoughts that suddenly matter. Death is first on my list of fears, then leaving my son of tender years. Don't want to go, not ready yet. So much of life I've yet to get. Plans are made. Operations booked. A week today. Well, I'll be hooked. No wait indeed. No none at all. And here I thought I'd wait till fall. First cut's not quite deep enough. This demon seems to be so tough. Return again. This time it's fall. And now this time they take it all. Awake my eyes. Awake and see this brand new view of who I'll be. One breast gone, the other there. Is this much more than I can bear? Not so I cry, not so at all. Pity and grief are so appall. Make of life the most, I say. Don't you waste one single day. Take your burdens, throw them aft. Cling to life as though a raft. 
Make it yours and make it strong. Write it hard and write it long. Fast forward now two years or more. Am I cured? Not known for sure. Time will tell what lies ahead, no matter if I fear or dread. This is me. It's who I am. A pebble in the master's plan. Happy I and grateful too for all the folks that helped me through. Life goes on. It always does. I can't go back to what it was. But I'm here. And here I'll stay. Until the good Lord takes me away. So, let's stuff this breast. Now, when you stuff this, you don't want to overstuff it because you don't want to be wearing a balloon. And I found that out when I stuffed the first one. I really overstuffed it and I sewed it up and oh my gosh, it was horrible. <laughs> it was just like a balloon and I couldn't, I couldn't even get it into the bra. So I had to take it all apart and do it again. So what I'm going to do is stuff the the outside part because you sort of pull it in and you want to make it concave on the inside so it fits on your chest comfortably and I need more stuffing. This is lovely stuff. It really is. It's so soft. It's great for stuffing dolls too. It's not, it's not the best roving for spinning and using as, um, as yarn. That's why I'm using it for this. It's kind of a, it doesn't really make a very nice yarn. I don't know what, what breed this is from, but. So, I am a 16-year breast cancer survivor, and, you know, as you get older, things happen. I did have treatment, and I have found now, after my last checkup, that one of the treatments that I had has now been found, found to cause uterine cancer. So... Um, I had an ultrasound done and it didn't look quite as it should. So this week I'm having some surgery and I'm having some biopsies and um, some scrapings and all that kind of stuff. And investigation is more for uterine cancer than anything else. So. It continues. Now look at that. Isn't that looking nice? Aha, uh -huh. I think it's gonna be the perfect size. So yes, the, it continues. You know, you think you're over it, but you might not be, or you might be. So I'm hopeful, I'm not worried about it. Um, I look at it like this. I have survived cancer once, and if I have to, I'll survive it again. It's not for me to say why or worry about it. I just face it. And so I won't be making any videos next week at all. And uh, I will let you know how it all turns out. But I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm counting on it to be fine. But having said that, if if you are a praying person, perhaps you could include me in your prayers. So this is about perfect. I'm not gonna stuff it anymore. Now I'm gonna finish it up. And then what you do is you take this inner piece here and you pull it through to the front and it 
it makes this concave so that when it sits on your chest it's not it's not hitting you know it's not flat on your chest there's a little bit of a of a cup there which is comfortable and that is the thing that makes it so much more comfortable than the regular breast prostheses because they're flat here and it's plastered onto your chest and it is uncomfortable after a while you know after you know if you bend it doesn't move it doesn't um this just is is so much better now the other thing that you can do with this is you can um you can add a weight to it a lot of people do add weights <clears throat> you know like a stone just to weight it because it is light you know it's going to move around but i have made my bra that i'm putting this in i've made the the cover is a little bit like say this would be the cup of your bra i have a piece that comes across here and it keeps it quite tight so it doesn't move around at all but you can put a stone in it to weight it if you want um i did have a little stone in my first one and i have since taken it out and it's a special stone and i don't even know if you can read what it says on there maybe you can it says believe and it came in a little pouch it was given to me by my best friend who did not survive breast cancer but i'm not going to put this one in this time i'm going to i don't know if i'll put a stone in it at all i think I think I'm just going to leave it like this and try it just like this. So I'm going to finish it off and I'm going to try it on and see how it how it fits. But really, it's looking great. I'm very happy with it. Now, I'm just going to tell you that if you want to try making this, if you have a need for one, the pattern is called, just let me look here. And I did check her site. It's still there. Um, it's it's called Tit Bits by Beryl Chang, T-S-A-N-G. She's a woman um, who lives in Toronto, Ontario. And she was the designer of the original um, knitted breast. And she has a site called knitty.com k-n-i-t-t-y dot com and i think if you go there you can find her pattern or just type in her name uh in a google search barrel b-e-r-y-l saying t-s-a-n-g thank you barrel for your pattern it's wonderful so there you go that's what i was making Thanks for watching. Don't forget you get your yearly mammograms, ladies. Do your breast examinations. It's very important. And keep me in your prayers. Bye for now.